I was at work, Angelica was at home, and uh, she called me and said that the, that the baby had gotten really quiet and could I please come home. She had gone down for her nap, for her afternoon nap, and when she woke up, she wasn't responding. I mean, she was awake, her eyes were open, but you could put her, your hand in front of her eyes and she wasn't moving. You could try to get her to move and she just wasn't responding to anything. On my way home, she started to, uh, to twitch on the left side of her, fa her, her face, her fingers and her toes were all, all twitching in unison. I had already called her pediatrician to say, hey, listen, we're, we want to come in earlier. As we were putting her on the table so they could do her vitals, she went into a grand mal seizure. Early November, she was would have been nine months. So she was eight months, almost nine months old. We had a perfectly healthy baby up until then. And out of nowhere, you know, her, her seizures essentially could change the entire course of her life. Every hour that she was awake, she was having a seizure. As we began to track it, we began to see that it was, it was happening with greater frequency and with greater duration, which was terrifying for us, just terrifying. I had no prior experience to, to seeing a seizure. And when she first was non-responsive and then her little lip kind of started twitching to like a minute later her, her hand and then her leg and I was just freaking out. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know I didn't know how to even calm her down or, or, or how to protect her at that point. I, I was just going crazy because I did not know what to do. Every time she has a seizure we know that that is essentially you know destroying her her ability to have a normal life. So we went from a healthy, uh, you know, seemingly normal, happy baby at five and a half months to being essentially told that her life had, and our lives had changed forever. By the time she came to us, she had only been having spasms for, I think, on the order of two weeks or so. So we were lucky in that we were able to get to her so early that we were able to intervene before she had taken any developmental regression or any step backward. We had to pull ourselves together and say, okay, this is happening. We need to figure out what to do to help our daughter. All the doctors said the same thing. The earlier you start in therapy, the quicker you can start to to rehabilitate some of the things that she lost because pretty much all the pathways that had been developed up to five and a half months had been disrupted by the seizure. Yeah, so we were basically starting over again. I was kind of in a fog, but I knew that I had to focus what I could on her because all the doctors were saying, if you start early, start early, you'll have better chances of her recovering some of the mobilities that she had already lost. You will go outside. The importance of very, very prompt diagnosis and very prompt institution of therapy is in fact highlighted by Audrey because Audrey's epileptic condition that we diagnosed is generally classified under what they, some people like to call the catastrophic epilepsies of childhood. They generally do not have a good prognosis. Audrey took a different path. The treatment worked. But importantly, the treatment was timely because the evaluation was timely. It's been two years and Audrey's been off her medication and she's doing great. In fact, one year ago was our last appointment with Dr. Rao. Can you spell your name? A-U-D-I-U-I. Good job. That spells And are you Audrey. learning to read books? I see you, the good <laughs> It's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you want up? You want to stand? Stand. Stand. Okay, let's stand. Up. There good we go. Job. As we've been able to get these seizures under better control, we've seen our development really increase. Yeah. Say hello. Hello. How are you? Good. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. She was having. Uh, 70, 100, 150 seizures a day. And we, we've gone down to you know, a couple of a day, maybe a couple in a week. So they've gone way down. She may have limitations, but we're not gonna stop. We're gonna continue finding, and we're gonna try to find 
avenues that might benefit her and help her grow and, and develop. We talked to a lot of different doctors, went to a lot of different places for blood pressure and side effects, but you know, Dr. Rao was the one constant. You know, we had her cell phone number, we could call her anytime, and God knows we did. <laughs> we did. And she always answered. Dr. Rao really cares for her patients, uh, really spends a lot of time getting to know them, getting to know their families, so she can really understand not only the epilepsy, but really what um, the other impacts that the epilepsy has on the whole family. Dr. Rao is an outstanding clinician, and I would like to claim that that's a, a result of her training here at UCLA and that somehow I contributed to that, but I think that she is just an exceptional person in general and that's reflected in her success in medicine and beyond. I really, I wouldn't have been able to pursue my epilepsy fellowship here if it hadn't been for Karen Cure, and without that fellowship, I wouldn't be staying here as faculty either. So really, Karen Cure played a huge part in my, um, my career, and I really owe it to Karen Cure that I'm continuing on here. Each epileptologist that we add to the community really allows us to take care of more patients and, and dedicate more time to each patient. There's certainly a huge need for more epileptologists and more folks doing epilepsy research, but we are still struggling to make that happen. We get three or four times the number of new patient referrals on any given day as we see on any given day. We want every second for the child to, to get every chance in life, and a child who has to wait to see a pediatric neurologist will have that much time going against them. I have no doubt that if Jen hadn't called and got Dr. Rao on the phone, when she did, Audrey's life would be very different. Treating them as, as early as possible really gives them the, the best chance for a great outcome. Dr. Rao is a huge step in that direction, but this is a marathon. It's not just a few steps. We need to go many miles. So there is, there's a long road ahead of us, but I think we're going in the right direction, and with the help of Karen Cure, I think we can get there. This is an exciting time to be in this field because we are now able to make more of a difference. And with the amount of research that's going into the brain, we are gonna have the technology to do so much more. Kids that previously we may have said, we don't really have a good treatment for this, and maybe 10 years down the line, we will have it.